Greetings and welcome to this course SY40302, which is Special Topics in Biotechnology. I welcome you to this course and my name is Dr. Kenneth Francis Rodriguez. I will be your instructor for the next five modules. So a little bit about myself. My name is Associate Professor Dr. Kenneth Francis Rodriguez. I have been teaching at UMS since 2009. And, I, and prior to that, I had worked with the biotechnology industry for more than 10 years. And during the course of these sessions, I would like to call them modules rather than lectures. I will share with you my experiences with regard to biotechnology, both from the perspective of industrial biotechnology, as well as research in the area of biotechnology. A significant amount of my time has been spent in the laboratory during which I have learned many techniques. And during the course of our presentation, I will acquaint you with these techniques. And I hope that you can learn from this experience. Now, there are five topics which I will be covering during the course of my lectures. The first one is related to the genomes of RNA viruses. The second one relates to the detection and diagnosis of RNA viruses. Then we will move on to the development of DNA and RNA vaccines the methodologies and the techniques. I will then introduce you to biorisk management and the Malaysian Biosafety Act. Now, how do I actually teach you? Of course, we are now in a non-face-to-face -face environment, which means I will be conducting the lectures online. But I essentially teach by asking questions. I want you to question things, question biological phenomenon. And then when you question, phenomenon, we look into the existing literature or the existing findings. And if there is no explanation, we try to elucidate phenomenon and then come to our own conclusion. So this is the way scientific research is conducted. You always have to inquire because in a scientific setting, there is no such thing as the final truth or the final answer there is always an evolution of knowledge and this is what I wish to highlight throughout the course of these five lectures and transfer this experiential learning technique to you. Now, the lectures or the discussions which we are going to have are going to focus on different aspects of biotechnology and molecular biology. The first module, we will discuss the genomes of RNA viruses. Now, why have we included this in your course? It is primarily because of the pandemic and the threat of emerging RNA viruses. And RNA viruses are ubiquitous. They are present everywhere. However, we do not know the exact mechanisms by which they become pathogenic, as in the case of the current pandemic. A virus, which is a zoonotic virus, has suddenly proliferated so rapidly across the world. So in order to understand the mechanisms of RNA viruses, we have to understand their genomes. And the wealth of information available in the area of genomics gives us an opportunity to understand the relationship between the genome structure, the function of the various genomic features and the organization, as well as their implications for pathogenicity. So this is what we will uh, discuss in the genomes of RNA viruses. The second lecture will extend from the first lecture. Now, the once we know about genomes of RNA viruses, we move on to the next step, which is the practical application of genomics. And in this lecture, we will focus on the diagnosis as well as the detection of RNA viruses. So there are pri primarily two types of mechanisms, one which focuses on the nucleic acids, which is the RNA-based detection techniques. And the second one focuses on the antigen antibody interaction using ELISA and other approaches. So we will discuss both of these approaches, the advantages, disadvantages, as well as the manner by in which you can create diagnostic kits for the detection of new and emerging RNA viruses. So I'd like to, you to be in a position where in the event of an unknown virus, how will you design a kit or how will you design a diagnostic procedure? We'll focus on the practical aspects of detection and diagnosis. Which brings us to the next lecture, which follows from the first two, which is the development of DNA and RNA vaccines. Now, the first generation of vaccines primarily focused on 
inactivated or attenuated viruses or bacteria or pathogens as the case may be. Then we had the next generation of vaccines, which are the subunit vaccines. But now currently we are facing a challenge of vaccinating mass populations. So we have to uh, vaccinate at a higher scale. This can only be achieved by using DNA and RNA vaccines. In this module, we will discuss how DNA and RNA vaccines are developed and how they can be applied to meet the challenges faced by a growing, a growing global population. This is what we look at in the lecture on DNA and RNA vaccines. Then we move on to the biorisk management concepts. So biorisk management focuses on the management of risks associated with biological agents. This risks can uh, be related to naturally occurring biological agents or ones which have been developed or engineered in the laboratory setting. In this lecture, I will introduce you to the different concepts or keywords associated with biorisk management. The purpose of doing this is in order to enable you to be empowered in your career. Because when you go into an interview session or into a discussion, you should be aware of the terms such as containment, uh, the groups, the different risk, risk groups, the different biosafety manuals which are available and the reference material for this. So I will introduce you to some of the key concepts. If you need further explanations or further digression into these topics, I have a YouTube link for you. You can uh, go and visit my library of resources. They are free to download and reuse and remix, and you can get more knowledge from that. Then we move on to the Malaysian Biosafety Act. Now, in the Malaysian Biosafety Act, I will teach you about the act itself and the interpretation of the act and how you can apply this act in situations where you or the company which you are employed with is working with biological agents that have been genetically modified. This relates to, for instance, crop plants, or even bacteria, or maybe uh, higher organisms which are modified using genetic engineering approaches. So we will cover this in the Malaysian Biosafety Act. Now coming down to your final examination, 60% of your final examination marks will be related to this particular topic. There will be three questions which are related to any one of the five topics in this particular lecture. So I would like to thank you and I would welcome you to this journey over the next five weeks. I hope to get to know you and prepare you for your career as a biotechnologist. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe.